This episode is just the resolution of the prior episode's plot threads, specifically the girls figuring out why they wanted to be huntresses, and it's fine. I do like hearing the girls giving the answers, not what they think should be their reasoning behind pursuing this job, but the actual honest reasonings they have. Top it off with Weiss's declaration that whatever their personal baggage is, is irrelevant. It's a job and they have to make sure it gets done right. I like that a lot. It's really nice. Then the plot finally starts to happen with Ruby stumbling into the White Fang's base of operations and then that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a nothing episode beyond that. I remember when this episode first aired, I was so frustrated because I was just itching for the plot proper to finally come back into the spotlight. And this felt like such an unnecessary roadblock in getting there. Little did I know I was going to have to get used to the taste of cliffhangers in the show. The best part of the episode, this is gonna sound so weird, it's like the animation on the girls while they're talking in bed. I know it feels so small, right? But it's great animation. They're really expressive and those small humanizing animations are done really well here. We play around with the camera and we do some fancy visual stuff when Blake reminisces about Adam. This move, where this, this where Yang turns over in bed. I remember in the animator commentary, they talked about how they did this flip because 3D models are notoriously buggy when you try to have them lay down on the ground while animating. So what they did was he did the motion capture for this flip while standing up and then after animating it vertically, he laid it down on the ground to make it look like she was just rolling over in bed. And it's just, it's really cool. It looks great. I just like learning that. It was cool. <laughs> the worst part of the episode is the amount of over-the-top contrivances it took for Ruby to find the plot again. Oh, the dog just happened to need to pee right here where you're conveniently within earshot of some white fang goons. Oh, and then the ground literally opens up right beneath her feet and she conveniently lands right in the middle of the villains' hideout. That's like 12 different zany ways Ruby magically ended up falling into the plot without having any of it be by Ruby's own volition. Ruby and her actions didn't lead her to the plot. The plot magically landed in her lap without her having to do anything. And that's not how good characterization works. And that's not how good stories work. <laughs> this is the second worst episode of the volume. It's so disappointing. As you can see, not much of the volume two finale ranks very high for me. Well, next episode is going to change that. Welcome, babies, to the Fruity Pebbles Castle of Torment, a scary castle with 100 rats. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so what I've been doing is I'm going to be releasing a Ruby episode review every day for one month. So I hope you have fun with this month-long Ruby review marathon. Want to see the next episode review early? Consider becoming a patron. And on that note, shout out to my beautiful $10 patrons. You're all amazing. Nako, Cool Duck, Andrew, Valhalla Knight, Chamomile, G Extreme, Classy Critic, Noah Perkins, Sunny Shy, Jake, Amber, Hype Man, Zero to Hero, Isaiah, Scaring Crows, Not All That Evil, Messiah Complex, Jacob, Virus, Ben Sketchbook, The Watcher, Omega Fighter, Trash, Wild Pilot, Josh, Swift Cannon, The Infinity Effect, Gino, and Twisty. If you like these reviews, go ahead and give it a like, and I'll see you for the next one. Bye bye.